Jo. Okay, the first part of Top Secret is going to be a video, and then we're going to go through a bunch of boards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven new boards. Seven new signs. All right, lady, what's this? This is an AT Tiny 816 board that's programmed over UPDI. What's interesting here is I've got a button, and when I press the button, you'll notice the LED stops blinking because I have the UPDI button set as a reset button, which is kind of nice. You can program or reset the circuit. Normally, the reset doesn't work. What you have to do is actually enable the ability. Hold on, let me find it. UPDI, there you go. Danger, bricks chips to that high voltage UPDI programmer. So when you set it to be a reset, you can't just send the UPDI signal normally because that could be confused with the reset signal. You have to send it a 12 volt pulse. And so I have a version of my UPDI friend here, which is in the shop. This version has a 12 volt high voltage pulse. So there's a little boost converter and an analog switch. When the RTS pin toggles, it sends a 12 volt pulse to tell the ship, hey, I want to put you in programming mode. So that way you can program it or use it as a reset input. Kind of handy. So now that I know this works, we're going to get this uh, finished up, fix this little blue wire hack, and get it into the shop. All right, what's this? OK, this is the back of, oh, can you, uh, can you maybe click on that first? This one? Yeah, that's the front. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. So this is, um, yeah, so there's two. There's two there usually there's only one image, but this time there's two. This is a, an, a, a, an evolved proto uh, prototyping uh, pie cowbell. So I want to get back to doing some cowbells. We were doing them in like 2022 ish, and then like kind of I took a break. I'm um, getting back to it. So this is the prototype one, but if you look, there's terminal blocks on each end. And so what this means is that you can put um, like stacking headers on this and you can plug it into. A Raspberry Pi Pico, put the Pico on top and plug into something else. And then you have terminal blocks. You can easily wire up um, sensors or other devices without soldering. So it's like meant for making prototyping a lot easier um, and also getting access to pins, even if you have stuff plugged into the Pico W or Pico. Okay. Um, this is my revision for the S3510 uh, timer. Again, I thought it was a low power timer, but it's actually a watchdog timer, which is a different thing, but still kind of useful. Um, so I updated this to add a, uh, first off, I changed it, uh, the inverter to be an end channel. I also added a little slide switch so you can determine whether you want to have the output inverted or not. Okay. Um, also getting back to some trinkies. Um, the opposite of a chip shortage is a chip surplus. And I actually have a little bit of a surplus of these SAMD21 E18s. I had like none for like two years. Uh, one of the things that was a little annoying about the part shortage is, you know, we were kind of told you have to order two years worth of inventory or a year's worth of inventory. And we're like, okay. And then they shipped all year or two years worth of inventory at once. So I've kind of got like two years worth of these chips, which means I'm going to design a whole bunch of trinkies. Uh, so I thought this would be a fun, easy one. So the SHT45 is a nice precision temperature and humidity sensor. Um, this means uh, this little board, you can plug it into your USB port on your computer or your laptop and boom, you now have an instant precision temperature humidity sensor. It's going to pipe, the data out over the USB serial port in like CSV format. And you can take that data, you can plot it, you can manipulate it with some other program like Python or VS code or Visual Basic or whatever. Uh, so it's got a little NeoPixel and a reset button. So you'll see, and there's a capacitor touch sensor on the end. Um, this is, okay, so I was working on the DS4420, which is a monophonic audio volume like slash gain chip. And then, and I, so I was like, oh, like when was I working on it? And then I realized we did an ion PI on the stereo version of like kind of the same chip. So the TPA 6130 is a stereo headphone amplifier that can drive uh, 16 ohm loads, which is kind of nice um, directly. And uh, you can adjust the gain for two differential signals at stereo input over I squared C. And I was like, oh, this could be kind of useful. You have audio output, you want to adjust the gain, and you want a headphone amp, uh, you know, bonus. Hopefully it turns on, you know, like when you plug it in, like you don't need to change the gain. It just acts as a headphone amp to start, but we'll find out. Uh, this is a little semi QT board to uh, to do that. I um, also have a bunch of extra BNO 055s and BMP 280s, and I thought this would be a good little sensor BFF to go onto a QT Pi or Shao board. Um, basically gives you 11 DOF, so you get um, three DOF of uh, accelerometer, gyro, magnetometer, and the BNO055 
does the fusion for you, which is kind of nice. So even if you have like a very slow chip or using MicroPython, you'll get quaternion data out. And then the BMP 280 will give you barometric pressure and temperature so you can do altitude detection. So it's gonna be good for like little drones or robots or like, you know, motion detection. Uh, and then this is that revision of the DS4420, the monophonic audio amplifier or audio gain adjuster. Um, just needed like a new power supply. And that's a whole bunch of new hardware coming. Ooh. More too. I think I'm almost done with this camera cowbell. Yeah.